I doubt the title of this video is going to attract a whole lot of views, but it does rhyme. Let's explore. Of course, I could be wrong. It will help if you do press the thumbs up in the down below, but I'm gonna be talking about the markets and what happened today with what the Federal Reserve did with their expected Fed rate hike of 50 basis points and how gold is hanging in there, it's holding the line. Silver is doing something a little unusual. This doesn't happen very often. It is actually up. It is the only metal that's up today. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what is behind these moves for gold and silver's price. Uh, I'm going to be referencing an article here from Kidco. The gold market is seeing one technical selling pressure, but continues to hold support above $1,800 an ounce as the Federal Reserve looks to raise the terminal rate to above 5% in 2023. So that's some of the forward guidance here, which means there will be more rate hikes and potentially a pause. And who knows? We very well may see a pivot if things don't go the way they like um, or if they you know have if they get nervous about where the economy is going uh, Wednesday as expected the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by 50 basis points to between 4.25 percent and 4.5 percent although the pace of rate hikes has slowed the central bank said it continues to see more tightening into 2023. And I quote, the committee anticipates that ongoing increases at the target range will be appropriate in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. In determining the pace of future increases in the target range, the committee will take into account the cumulative tightening of monetary policy the lags with which the monetary policy affects economic activity and inflation and economic and financial developments, the central bank said in its monetary policy statement. And so when you think about that and the uh, Jerome Powell's press conference, he said, you know, that a lot of, of what's been going on that really has the, it's just a lag. We've not really felt the effects of these rate hikes yet. And they're anticipating on what that movement could happen. In other words, uh, even some of the earlier rate hikes, we've not really seen it have a whole lot of effect yet, according to Powell. At least negative uh, is what he's saying. So if the housing market starts to really take a turn in the opposite direction, this is where the pivot could come in, which means that they're leaving that open, I feel, for a pivot in the other direction. Uh, so the latest economic projections known as the dot plot indicates that the central bank sees the Fed's fund rate rising to 5.1% next year, up from September's projection of 4.6%. In further interest rate projections, the central bank sees the Fed funds rate falling to 4.1% in 2024 and then dropping to 3.1% by 2025. Some analysts have said that the estimate poses a bigger risk to long-term gold prices as it shows the Federal Reserve will hold interest rates higher for longer. The, OF, the FOMC projections for rate hikes at year-end 2023 are a big contrast to market pricing. The market was looking for 4.28% before the Fed and they're forecasting 5 to 5 and a quarter at the medium with only two dots below 5% according to Adam Button, who's the head of currency strategy of ForexLive.com. Now, Powell could turn all that around by introducing some uncertainty around it and saying that perhaps we won't have to cut them that much if inflation falls faster and than expected and growth stumbles, Button added. But if he sticks to his guns, there is a lot of repricing that needs to happen, and we could see much more selling in stocks and buying in the U.S. dollar. Uh, Paul Ashworth, chief North American economist at Capital Economics, said that the individual committee interest rate expectation shows a bigger risk and that rates will continue to move higher through the year. The new projections are exceptionally hawkish, he said in a note, although I, I kind of disagree with that. 
he noted that St. Louis Fed Reserve President James Bullard and Minneapolis Fed President uh, uh, Neil Kashkari both see the federal funds rate going as high as 5.75% next year. Uh, so we'll see. Now, that would be somewhat of a hawkish move if that were to occur. It's hard to know whether Fed officials really believe their own projections or whether they are making a point to try and reverse some of the loosening in financial conditions over the next month. If, the, if it's the former, then reality will eventually intervene as a disinflation evident in the recent data mounts next year. But maybe the evidence won't be compelling enough to persuade the hawkish Fed to move to the sideline after a solitary 25 basis point hike in early February as they are currently forecasting. So down again to a quarter point rate hike. And that would be something else to see if they were to really start to slow down even more. Uh, the inflation forecast, forecast was upgraded for 2023 and 24. So any good news on the inflation front ahead could cause policymakers to uh, hike by less than shown in these projections. I don't know, you know, go less than 25 basis points, and they usually do it at a quarter point uh, in, in, in a quarter point intervals. The statement reiterated the need to take into account that lags with monetary policy works as well, and we expect to see enough progress in cooling activity to require only one additional 50 basis point rate hike ahead, which would bring the ceiling in the funds, federal funds rate to 5%, slightly below the median projection. So the Federal Reserve's signal further monetary policy tightening and has lowered its growth forecast for 2023 and raised its inflation outlook. You know, they're trying to cover their bases here, it sounds like, kind of waffling around, kind of seeing where things are. Do they really have a hold on inflation? Do they, you know, what is, uh, what is the real outlook? You know, I, I really don't think they know uh, and can really can, can um, forecast what's going to happen with inflation. And uh, all they got to do is just react to it. And in a sense, it's kind of what they've been doing because it's not been transitory as, as has been, been predicted. And uh, we're at a point now where I think it's going to be uh, one of those things where uh, it's going to be dramatic if things really start to turn and um, one way or the other. So we'll see how it plays out in the long run. In the meantime, we continue to hold on. So where are the metals now? Gold holding on, holding the line above uh, $1,800. It's, uh, it's at 1809 right now, uh, down $2.40. Negligible uh, uh, loss today of just over a tenth of a percentage point. Silver is actually up a little bit, up 0.8%, uh, to up 20 cents today, over $24 again in the ask price, that is. Platinum and palladium are both down uh, around a half a point apiece. So there's where we are at with uh, gold and silver, the precious metals markets, as we see what's going on with, with, uh, with, with gold and silver and with what the Fed is doing. Now, uh, the gold to silver ratio, it's worth noting, is now down to 75.59. It's pretty low. It's pretty remarkable to see that uh, move low in um in the gold to silver ratio but the uh, the federal reserve sees a relatively stable labor market in the, in the next two years with the unemployment rate rising to 3.7 percent this year down from the september projection of 3.8 the unemployment rate is expected to hold steady at 4.6 percent in the next two years up from previous estimates of 4.4 percent so that's going to also weigh in on what they do and uh Consumer prices are expected to rise 5.6% this year, up from September's forecast of 5.4%. Next year, headline inflation is expected to rise 3.1%, up from the previous estimate of 2.8%. By 2024, inflation is expected to rise 2.5%, up from the last forecast of 23 In 2025, it's going back to rise to 2.1%, up from September's estimate of 2%. And keep in mind that, as Jerome Powell in the Fed statement said, their target is 2% inflation. So really, we live in a perpetual state of inflation in this country where that bill right there, the dollar, is, uh, is, 
is bound to lose value by design by at least 2% each year. That's considered normal, folks. That is the normal that has been the normal for quite some time with what the Federal Reserve targets. Uh, in reality, it'd be nice to have an actual stable money monetary system that didn't inflate, didn't deflate, it just held the line in general overall. But nonetheless, that's where we live today. And with all that being said, I'm surprised um, in a way that gold and silver aren't higher. But on the other hand, I'm actually amazed at gold, especially that it is as high as it is, given everything that's going on. And it's been able to really hold the line for all intents and purposes throughout all of these rate hikes, whereas silver has been much more the victim of these. Of course, a lot of it also has to do with the supply chains and the shutdowns in China. So it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out from here. Until then, we'll just keep going with the rhyme. Silver shines and gold holds the line. So stack on and enjoy your precious metals and, and just roll with the punches in terms of uh, where the markets go from one day to the next. All we can do is just, uh, is just hang in there and whatever you have stacked and, and hold on to, continue to do so. Because gold and silver will preserve your wealth if held on to long enough and, if, and utilizing smart dollar cost averaging. Where you buy a little bit more and the price is lower and a little, little bit less and maybe none at all if the price spikes up especially dramatically. There we have it. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.